My name is Brittany Liscord, and I am an educator at the Children's Museum and Theater of Maine. Uh, right now, the museum and theater is closed, so I am very glad to be joining you right here from my house uh, in southern Maine. And thank you so much for inviting me into yours. And a very special thank you to all of our essential workers who are working to make us uh, safe and protect us. So thank you so much. So today is day two of our catapult challenge. So we are going to be exploring catapults and how they work. So I thought catapults would be a really fun activity because we use science, engineering, and math and design theory while doing something fun. So hopefully uh, you can join me today and be inspired to create your own catapult. Uh, and this can be something really simple as we talk about force and motion. If you wanna check out uh, those basics, uh, there is a fabulous video that my uh, colleague Sam made called Force and Motion about slingshots. And if you wanna get really technical, you can really design complicated catapults and explore things like velocity and force. So today, for our catapult designs, we are going to be working on the second phase of design theory, and that's imagining. That's right, we're gonna be brainstorming. Last week, we asked questions. We asked questions like, hmm, how do you design a catapult? Or how far do we want our catapult to go? Today, as we brainstorm, we're gonna be covering some of the similar topics, um, like energy, motion, potential energy, and kinetic energy and looking at some possible designs for you to build catapults. Um, so feel free to let me know you're here and ask questions as we go along. I admit, I am not a catapult expert, so um, any input you have would be greatly appreciated too. Um, and I will say that there are a lot of different uh, designs of ways to build fun catapults for kids online. I use whatever I have around my house. So sometimes designs are very specific about materials you need. Um, I encourage you to be really creative with your material use. Don't feel like if you don't have something in your house like popsicle sticks, you can't build a catapult that's fun to launch something cozy and kind like a cotton ball. So use what you have around the house and we'll go over some possible materials that you might have. So um, brainstorming, what do you need for a catapult? Well, last week, we made this nice design um, for what we might, what kind of the basic functions of a catapult. And just as a reminder, a catapult is a machine that projects an object or a projectile. So we need, first and foremost, that arm, that projection arm that goes whoop and uses energy and transfers energy to make something fly is really the fun part, right? And we've of course got a little, what we call a basket right here where the projectile, I'm gonna use a cotton ball, sits. And lastly, we've got a frame. A frame is just what holds the arm in the basket. This is where it gets complicated. Frames can be as simple as a straight line or really complex. So depending on what you're up for today, your catapult uh, brainstorming and imaginings could go really complex or stay simple and you could compare the two so let's take a look here so this is what i'm working with we've got our our frame our arm and our basket designing some simple catapults today where we're just brainstorming just brainstorming all right well first of all this is the one i built last week we've got i've got markers um to kind of be my simple oh oh yeah so what, yeah, Laura, you bring up an excellent point about safety. So I want to. So we'll talk about safety and energy. So when we've got a simple catapult like this with little markers, um, and if we have a little spoon here, we're going to use the spoon. It is going to have energy in it. When we bend it like this, this is called potential energy, and we know that if we release it like that it's going to have what we call kinetic energy. That's 
movement. And it also has some force involved. Um, and we want to make sure that that force is not directed at anybody's body because that force is going to hurt people's bodies. We want to make sure that the force is directed not at people, but, but like in my instance, the other end of my porch. So no one's there. So be mindful of where your force is. And this is a great project to work on with um, different groups and family members and fun for adults too. So we are, so if we, when we have your arm here, um, when you, when you are choosing your arm, you want it to have something that can hold energy. So a spoon is bendy. It can hold some potential energy. If I use this chopstick, it's not so bendy. So I would need to attach this with something that could bend, like an elastic, and store some energy. So just to complete this brainstorming idea, I'm just gonna wrap the spoon right around with an elastic, just like that. And I'm gonna do one more elastic and make kind of a little cross on the front. Got a few more, whoop, that elastic broke. A few more connecting elastics here. Just to make a very simple kindness catapult design. Just like that, pretty simple. And then if I wanted to make a frame for that, I thought maybe I could connect a spoon down below. So ultimately I've got my, let's see if I can hold everything, my arm, my plastic spoon, and then my frame and kind of my fulcrum that my arm is moving on and another part of my frame down below. So this is a very simple design that you could try with any sort of materials around your house. I'd be curious to know what you can come up with. And then, should we try it out? Launch them. Let's see. Should we try a, a cotton ball? All right, here it goes. It's gonna go right over. It's gonna go right over, I think, the screen. Here we go. Three, two, one. Um, or test one more design today as we're brainstorming design. So we'll get two designs built today. Here's one simple spoon catapult. And we'll do one more design. And always remember as we're designing catapults today that we're launching things that are um, kind and cozy or soft and silly. We want to be mindful of our forces, right? And where that force is going that's all about what we're learning about today is force and energy. So here's another catapult frame. This is called a pyramid catapult. Um, and you'll often see these built with popsicle sticks. I didn't have popsicle sticks, so I just went on a walk around my block and used just sticks from a tree. Um, and then I used painter's tape just like this to connect them. So if you want to do this, you're going to start out with a triangle like this and then add one, two, oh boy, where's my third stick? Oh, there it is. Three sticks. Let's see if we can get this up so you can see. We're gonna add three sticks. One there, one there, one there, and they'll connect. And then we would just tape, tape the top to make that pyramid. So that would be your pyramid frame, and they'll all be about the same your sticks can be about the same length, but if they're not perfect, that's okay. You can probably stick them together. So once you have your pyramid frame, do you remember the other parts that we need for our catapult? We need our arm and our basket. So I've got a bucket full of possible arms here. Some more markers, chopstick, straw, plastic fork, um, I've got a big ruler too, and I wondered if this ruler would work well. And like Sam said, I'm tinkering right now. I'm just trying things out. I'm brainstorming to see what would work. This is all pretty new to me. So if I put my arm here, 
I'm gonna use an elastic band because I need something to store some energy, I need some potential energy. So now when I move my arm back, we've got potential energy stored in that elastic band. And what happens when I let go? Whoop! It becomes kinetic energy. It moves. So I'm gonna pull out my, my soft and silly here, my nice cotton ball. Um, but I guess I kind of need a basket, right? Should I add a basket on? Okay, I'm gonna take some tape. And um, I found my basket, a potential basket this morning. We'll have to see how well it works in the recycling. I just have a, a bottle cap. I'm gonna tape it right to the end of my arm. And then I can, oh, it's so cute. It fits perfect right inside there. What do you think? Yeah, check it out. Cool. Okay, let's try it out. We're gonna try the pyramid catapult. I am launching at no human, just a wall. And it's a nice soft, um, I'm using a cotton ball. You could use a pom pom or anything soft you have. Ready, one, two, three. Oh, nice. It worked pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna continue to tinker and test with my two different designs. I'm curious what other catapult design you could come up with. Um, that's kind of fun. And then next week, we're gonna get into measuring how far um, our catapults are launching and add some math. Um, so this was a lot of great designing today and great asking questions and doing some imagining and brainstorming about what we're doing. And next week we'll add some math along to our, our science and our engineering. So um, hopefully you can find some of these objects around your house and have fun making and tinkering um, safely too. So thanks so much for being here and I look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Have a great and playful Friday.